Hi guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to learn about aggregate supply. Now let's look at the definition first. Aggregate supply is a curve or schedule that shows the relationship between the amount of real domestic output or GDP that firms produce in that economy with the nation's price level. Okay? So the aggregate supply curve shows a direct relationship between total production and price level. However, the shape of the aggregate supply curve is not necessarily upward sloping, right? Because normally when we say something is direct or has a direct relationship, we always envision an upward sloping curve. But in the case of aggregate supply, there are actually three types of shapes, okay? Depending on the time horizon and depending on how quickly output prices and input prices change. Let's take a look at the three different time horizons. The first is immediate short run. Now in the immediate short run, both input and output prices are fixed. This is because immediate short run is a time period too short to respond to price changes. For instance, um, the input prices remain fixed normally due to contractual agreements, such as salaries and wages. Firms must promise to pay how much uh, is written in the labor contracts, right? And besides that, output prices are also fixed uh, because firms set prices for their customers and then they agree to supply whatever quantity demanded at those prices. Okay, so now with uh, the output prices fixed and the firms selling however much customers want to purchase at those output prices, you can see that the immediate short run aggregate supply curve is a straight line. Okay, so this straight line implies that the total amount of output supplied okay, in this economy depends directly on the volume, okay, on the volume or how much is being supplied at that particular price level. So as you can see, if total spending is low, okay, at this P1, firms will supply a small number of output. But if total spending is high, okay, at this price P1, then firms will supply a higher amount of output. Okay, so the resulting amount of output may be higher or lower than the economy's full employment output level, QF. Now let's move on to the second time horizon, short run. Now in the short run, the input prices are still fixed. However, the output prices have already begun to be more flexible. Okay, so as you can see here, the shape of the aggregate supply short run curve is no longer a straight line. In fact, it's upward sloping. Why? Well, because since input prices are fixed, okay, so technically the changes in the price level here, it will basically raise or lower the firm's real profits, right? So logically, at higher price levels, we can see that the firms will generate more profit. So this will in turn become an incentive for them to produce more, vice versa. At lower price levels, firms will may be making um, lower profits, so they will not be having much incentive to produce a lot. Okay, so in a way, that is why in the short run, the aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. Now, there's another point that I want you to focus here. Uh, QF here okay, is the full employment GDP level. As you can see here, right, the shape of the aggregate supply curve is relatively flatter before the QF, right? However, after the QF, the shape of the supply curve, aggregate supply curve is relatively steeper. Now, why is that? The main reason is due to the per unit production costs, okay? So below QF, oops, okay, Sorry. Now, below QF uh, or below the full employment level, you can see that there's a lot of unutilized um, production capacity. Okay, there'll be still a lot of people maybe unemployed. Okay, so firms are able to still, you know, um, use those unutilized resources. Therefore, firms are able to expand production. Okay, however... Once we reach the full employment level, you know what full employment means, right? It means most of the resources are already employed, okay? So, um, regardless, although the price level has started to increase, okay, f uh, firms have incentive to produce, but because most of the resources are already being utilized, okay, there's not much or not many available resources left. That is why the amount of output being produced is quite slow, okay, compared to before. 
okay I hope you understand why <laughs> before the QF it's flatter but after the QF the supply curve is steeper okay remember it's due to the per unit production cost it's basically due to the availability of resources at that point in time remember QF is the full employment um, level of GDP now let's take a look at the third time horizon which is long run now the long run is a period of time where both input prices and output prices are flexible as you can see here the aggregate supply curve in the long run is vertical at the economy's full employment output level. Okay, I'm going to try to show you how the vertical aggregate supply curve came about. Okay, so let's start with the basic um, XY plane. Okay, so here's our real GDP or real output. Here's the price level. Okay, so in order to try to uh, explain this concept or understand this concept, we begin our discussion with a short run aggregate supply curve. Okay, so initially this is our first short run aggregate supply. Okay, because the long run is made up of many, many short runs, right? So that is why we begin with short run aggregate supply curve. Let's choose a one price level at random. Say this is P1. Okay, at P1, the GDP level is Q1. Okay, uh, but for the purpose of simplicity, let's assume that at P1, this is the full employment GDP level. Okay, now say price level increases to P2. Okay, so increase it somewhere higher here. Okay, let's say price increase. So what happens when price increase? So you know that along the same um, supply curve, there will be a upward movement along the supply curve because as you can see um, because in the short run right there's a positive relationship right between price and output level because higher prices reflect higher um, profits so firms will have the incentive to produce more okay so that is why for a while in the short run output will increase to q2 for a while but after a while in the long run you know, things are very flexible, right? As I mentioned you just now, long run is a period where both the, not only the output price, but the input prices are flexible. So when there's an increase in prices, nominal wages, okay, will want to uh, be increased too. Okay, there'll be a, perhaps a demand from the union, trade union. They can argue that it's expensive now. We demand for higher wages. So this is what it means in the long run, Input prices, which includes nominal wage, will also increase. So what happens when nominal wage increase? Now, nominal wage is one of the determinants of aggregate supply. Higher wages reflect or show that it will be more expensive for firms to produce. Therefore, they will also, firms will also respond, yeah? They will reduce the total output being produced. So this is the new short-run aggregate supply curve. Okay, it will reduce. So although just now, at first, we have a, we had a higher upper level, okay, but because in the long run, okay, nominal wages respond. So as a response to this respond, firms will reduce their aggregate supply curve collectively. So what happens is output will also fall back, okay, fall back. So the next instance, say price falls to uh, P3, okay. So let's say here's P3. Okay, so what happens in the short run when price falls? Okay, let's go back to the original short run curve, yeah? You know this. Okay, when price fall, you can see there's a, a downward movement along that um, existing short run aggregate supply curve, right? Why? Because now a fall in price reflects lower profitability, so firms don't have the incentive to produce much. Okay, so output here falls. Okay, however, again, in the long run, input prices will, will react, respond to a change in price. So here what happens, the nominal wage will also fall. Okay, so now it's cheaper, isn't it, for firms to engage or to hire more workers. So what happens is the aggregate supply curve will shift to the right. So although initially output falls, but now with the new uh, or, or with the shift of the total aggregate supply curve, it will go back okay so what can we see here what's the moral of the story here what it means here is although in the short run okay the short run aggregate supply curve will shift left right left right depending on the circumstances but what you can see here is there will always be that one focal point where it remains the same which is where here see 
although it increases a bit, it will always fall back to the full employment level. Although a GDP falls a bit, they will always go back to the full employment level. Okay, so here, here, here. So if you can try to imagine, if you can, I'm trying to find another pen here. Okay, so if you connect all these points together, okay, you can actually see this is how we derive our long run aggregate supply. Okay, so this is what it means by um, although in the short run there will be changes in real GDP, but in the long run, output levels will always go back to the full employment level. There's another way to look at this. In the long run, the aggregate supply curve is vertical or fixed at the full employment level because, as we know, that once an economy reaches the full employment level, it implies that all of the resources in the economy is assumed to be used optimally already, right? So what that means is, if all the resources are being used, utilized, this is the maximum or the optimal output that the economy can produce. Therefore, you can see that the amount of output being produced is no longer dependent on price. Because regardless of what the price level is, that is the amount that's going to be produced in the economy. Rather, in the long run, since the production level is not, you know, it does not depend on price, so it's depending on other things such as technology, uh, labor quality, capital, um, and perhaps natural resources. So the only way to increase this, it would be to come up or to find more resources, okay, not the existing ones. So to recap, the aggregate supply curve would be a straight line during the immediate short run period. It will be upper sloping during the short run period and it will be a vertical line during the long run period. So after learning about uh, what the aggregate supply curve is and the different shapes of the aggregate supply curve, the next thing you need to learn is the determinants of aggregate supply. Now determinants of aggregate supply are basically the factors that make the aggregate supply curve shift. Okay, So when the aggregate supply curve increases, it will shift to the right. If the aggregate supply curve falls or decreases, it will shift to the left. So let's take a look at the first point, input prices. Now you guys do remember what are inputs? Inputs are basically the factors of production. Okay, anything that the companies or firms used to produce goods and services. There are generally four inputs, which are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Now these inputs have their prices. For instance, uh, labor, their price is our wage. Okay, what about land? The price is their rental, for instance. Okay, so basically these inputs do not come free. Firms have to pay for, uh, for them in order to be able to use them to produce their goods and services. Okay, anyway, these inputs can either be obtained domestically or bought within Malaysia or bought from other countries, imported. Now, regardless whether the input is domestic or imported, it follows that whenever the price of the inputs increase, okay, so... In other words, it's expensive, isn't it? Those inputs become expensive. So whenever the prices of the inputs increase, okay, the effect is it will also increase the average cost for the firms. Okay, what average cost is is the cost to produce lah. The total cost divided by the total output being produced. So anything that increases average cost, it deems it for the firms making it to be expensive lah to produce. So the firms will try to cut down on production okay because firms will always ultimately ultimately firms want to maintain their profits so if their costs are too expensive they will cut down on production cutting down production means aggregate supply will fall but it means is it will be shifting to the left uh, okay now alternatively or on the other hand if input prices falls somehow it's cheaper to buy by any of the resources, this will also reduce our average cost. So this is good news, isn't it, for the firms? If there's a fall in the average cost, it means it's relatively cheaper to produce um, output. So they will have the incentive to produce more. So aggregate supply will increase. When aggregate supply increases, it's basically a shift to the yeah, right. Now let's take a look at the second determinant, productivity. What's productivity? Productivity is basically a measure of real output per unit of input. Okay, so the formula for productivity is total output over the amount or total inputs used to make those output. Okay, so anyway, the more productive okay, your workers or the resources are, the lower will be the average cost to the firm, right? So that is why firms always strive to have more productivity 
because the more productive, okay, the higher the productivity, it will translate to a much lower average cost. So you know anything that falls or anything that makes the average cost cheaper, it will increase production. So aggregate supply curve will increase. Okay, so I'm going to show an example on how we can relate productivity with lower costs. Okay, uh, let's say this is the our existing condition. Real output produces 20. Input needed to produce this 20 units is 5, maybe 5 workers or whatever. And the price per unit of this 5 workers is $1. Okay, so let's calculate the productivity for this 20 output first. Now, Productivity is total output over total input. So total output produces 20, total input use is 5. So productivity at this point is 4. Okay, so what is the average cost um, for this particular production? Average cost is total cost divided by total output. So we need to calculate the total cost first of producing this 20. Remember, we need 5, right, labor. So 5 times 1 is our total cost of production, $5.00 over the total output 20 so five dollars over 20 you get about 25 cents okay this, oops i can't see it uh, 25 cents all right now let's say let's say somehow output is increased to 40. okay just now output was only 20 now output is increased to 40. see what happens to productivity it means we are more productive before it was 20 over 5. now it's 40 over 5. can you see there's an increase in productivity before it was only four now it's eight now, when there's higher productivity, it can also be translated to a much lower average cost. See here? Total cost is still $5 because we still use five workers. However, this $5 is now divided upon a bigger number. So this is math. If the same number is divided by a number which is increasing, it will have a much lower result. So as you can see here, previously it costs the company 25 cents to produce. Now it only costs them 12.5 cents. Okay. The third determinant of aggregate supply is legal institutional environment. For instance, if business taxes were increased, it will make production cost higher, right? Because the companies would need to pay more taxes. So anything that increases average cost will make production less. So the aggregate supply curve will shift to the left. However, if there are more subsidies given by the government, this will ease the, uh, the troubles of the firms. In other words, when there are more subsidies, the average cost curve, uh, the average cost will fall. So it'll be cheaper uh, for the companies to produce. Therefore, aggregate supply curve will shift to the right as there's more production. Okay, in terms of government regulation, this refers to the regulations that the government makes. Okay, for instance, if there are stricter regulation in terms of uh, pollution, for instance, or production, whereby companies would need to uh, abide by the rules and install um, equipment in their factories. Okay? All of those things might increase their average costs, right? So that will cause the aggregate supply curve to shift to the left, vice versa.